Okay, so let's develop this wall a little further for our project. We're going to click on it again, and we're going to go to Edit Type, and we're going to go, we'll click the Preview while we're in here, right? And what we're going to do is go back into the Edit. Now, depending on whether we decide in the end to have our concrete masonry on the very outside, or we decide to have it as the structural element. It's still a structural element of our wall, right? That's why we call it masonry bearing wall construction. So what we're going to have to decide is whether eventually we're going to have a 12-inch unit or an 8-inch unit. And that's easily changeable because it's not going to matter to us until we get to the detailing phase of this project. So what I want to do now for right now is put some placeholders in. Let's make some assumptions. Let's click insert once and insert again and what I'm going to do on the outside of this wall right now I'm going to put a airspace in here so instead of structure I'm going to say that a, there's going to be a thermal air layer right and part of that air layer is going to be because behind that concrete masonry wall if we don't have an airspace where is the mortar going to go once we what once we put the block on top, that mortar is going to escape on the front and the back. And the mortar is going to fall to a catching device at the bottom of the wall that we're going to detail in there. But if there was just another material right up against the CMU, it wouldn't work. So we need an airspace. And we're going to put an airspace in this wall right now of two inches. That is probably going to change, though. Then, right, where does that need to go? That needs to go down behind that okay so now we're at nine and five eighth inches now we have another item up here another uh, layer or level let's say that we wanted to put a metal panel on the front of our CMU wall right so instead of the CMU being exposed maybe we have a decorative type of metal panel we can do that as well so let's try that so we've got uh, 3 eighths uh, we've got a couple of inches to work with I believe that's 9 10 11 12 so 2 and 3 eighths to work with to make it 12 I believe so 2.325 oops I think I got that wrong 325 I'm sorry Got that a little backwards. No? Hold on a second. So it's, thank you very much, it's 375. I'm putting 325 in there and getting a weird one. I could have also just put 3 slash 8, but I'm a decimal person. So, all right. So we've got that in there. That total thickness now is back up to 1. But what is that going to be? We're going to click here, and we're going to call this a finish. And when I go in here, I'm going to type in metal see what I get and I've got a lot of different finishes I'm going to use this metal paint finish gray but I'm going to right click and duplicate it and I'm going to say this is a metal panel right and I can make this let's call it red for right now metal panel red and I can go in and change the shading of it right so I'm gonna hit apply right that's my material that's a assigned to it now I'm gonna simply go here back to where it is and now I'm gonna try and pull up and change the color Hold on. oh sorry no I was on the right tab I'm not sure why that's not pulling up just a all right, so you can't have that button right there. I was clicking that. Right now, I'm just putting something in place while it's shading, right? So I'm just picking that right there um, because I don't want fire engine red. I just want this kind of maroonish red, right? That works in there. If I go get a surface pattern for it, I can click in here and I can grab a crosshatch, a large or a small one. I probably want something in the model category, like this 12 inch tile and I can always adjust these right so I can make it more like a a ceiling tile uh, right now so I'm going to pick that and again that this really doesn't matter for us right now because this is going to be changing later anyway um, I'm going to hit apply okay and okay and apply and now I'm finished so if I go out in my model and I look here and I hit SD on my keyboard you see I'm not seeing anything. Why am I not seeing anything? 
let's look at our wall again. Let's look at our wall, right? Is that wall the wrong way right now? So if I click on this and I look at the edit type, I know I built the wall right. This is on the outside, correct? This is on the very outside. So now I need to go in that first floor plan again, or any plan for that reason, click on that and see my arrows are here. I need to flip that wall, right? And now that I flip that wall, unfortunately that wall moved. So I've got to get that wall back to where it was. So what I'm going to do is on my keyboard, I'm going to type in AL to this, and now that's there. And now when I go back to my 3D view, I can see my metal panels on my wall. Now to change the rest of those, if I hold on to, if I just hover over one wall and I hit tab and click, all of them need to be changed to my ADCG 259 CMU. And you can see they were all drawn like this. So now you have to go in and do what? Flip this wall and then align it. Now you see why I use the datums. I wanted you to see. The datums help you do things like this and not have to try to move them manually. So now I'm aligning, and we'll do this last one. Right? Unjoin them, align to here. That, and now when I go to my 3D view, I've got my metal panel and my CMU wall and everything is there on the outside and I'm good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and let you get caught up.